Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are looking at a, a couple sequences, a few sequences, and we're going to kind of come up with some data on those sequences, some terms, some next terms, as well as then uh, write their explicit equation to um, to determine this sequence that would actually um, give you that pattern. So we're going to look at the pattern here. So. This is uh, specifically arithmetic sequences. So this one's coming from CPMs, Integrated Math 1. Uh, and this is section uh, 5.3.2, uh, number 109. So it says, consider the following sequences as you complete parts A through C. So for A, it says, assuming that the sequences above are arithmetic with T equals 1 as their first term, determine the next four terms of each sequence. For each sequence, write an explanation of what you did to get to the next term and write an equation for each of those for T of n. Okay, so my sequence one, we start with two, then we go to six. Then it says it's arithmetic. I have to assume it's arithmetic. That means there's a common difference. Well, if you see from two to six, we added four. So in this case, that difference is you're adding four every time. So my next term would be if six plus four would be uh, 10, and then plus four again, 14, and then plus four, and then plus four. So there's the next four terms, and then it would continue on. What would be this equation, right? So each time, what are we doing? We're adding four every time, right? So explanation of what you did in the next term, we add four each term, right? Add four um, each term. Okay. So then from there, uh, let's come up with our equation. So our equation would be what? If we know we're adding for each term and we know it's arithmetic, arithmetics are always linear. So we can write them in this form, the equation y equals mx plus b. So my common difference is four. Um, so it would be y equals 4x plus, and then my b is my zero term, right? My zero term, whatever that zero term is. So if this is my first term, this is t sub 1, right? This is the t sub 1 right here. So then my next term, my zero term would be here. So I'd go backwards. I subtract four, right? Because that's what you're doing reverse to get there. So that would be negative two. So it'd be plus negative two, or we could just say minus two, right? So I can just rewrite that to be four X minus two. So there's the equation for the first one. The second one, my first term is 24. My second term is 12. So if I notice what's happening, it's subtracting 12 each time, right? My common difference, in this case, I'm subtracting self. So I'd subtract 12 again, my terms would go zero and then subtract 12 from that would be negative 12 and then subtract 12 again, be negative 24 and then negative 36. So my common difference again is to subtract. That's what I'm doing each turn, subtract 12 each term. And if that's the case and it's arithmetic, my, my slope is negative 12 because that's the common difference. Your common difference is your slope. So negative 12x, and then what would be my y-intercept? If I take this backwards to the zero term, if I go this direction, right, I would actually add 12 to go the other way. And so that would be 36 would be my zero term. So I'm going to say plus 36. So there's that equation. All right. My last, my third sequence, it looks like I start with one, and then I go to five. And then I go what? So what, again, it looks like I'm adding 4 every time. 1 plus 4 is 5. So add 4. So then 5 plus 4 is 9 plus 4, 13 plus 4, 17 plus 4, 21. And then again, my, I'm adding 4 each time. So that is, again, very similar to sequence 1. So it's going to be y is equal to 4x. So it's, again, the common difference. That slope is my common difference is 4x and then my y-intercept go backwards subtract 4 to get to the zero term would be negative 3 if i subtract 4 
So it's going to be minus 3. So there's my equations, right? So let's answer these questions. So then it says, would you would your terms be different if the sequences were geometric? Determine the next four terms for each sequence if they are geometric. So now we're dealing with geometric. Geometric, remember, have common ratios. Okay, so there's common ratios with geometric. That means that uh, my common ratio, remember, is taking the term uh, after the, the, the second term divided by the first term or the uh, third term divided by the second term or the fourth term divided by the third term, right? So it's, it's taking the terms and dividing them, and that's your common ratio. And then when you do that, your equation would always be y is equal to your initial value times your common ratio to the x. It's an exponential. So geometrics are exponential, right? Geometric are exponential. Okay, so if I go back to my sequence, which is uh, starting with 2, then 6, so 2 comma 6, what's next? Well, I only have two terms to determine, so I'm going to take 6 divided by 2. So my common ratio would be 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So that means I'm going 3 times each time. So I'm taking that 2 and I'm going to multiply by 3. And if I take that 6 and do the same thing, multiply by 3, it's going to become 18 is my next term. Multiply by 3 again, and I get uh, 54. Uh, multiply by 3 again. Let's see here. Let me help myself out here. Uh, 162, and then multiply by 3 again, I'd be 482. So um, those are my next four terms. And what's the explicit equation would be, again, my common ratio is my r. That's my common ratio. So my equation is y is equal to the r is going to be 3 to the x. And then my initial value would be to, to find that zero term. So instead of multiply by 3, I'm going to divide by three. So two divided by three would be two thirds. So I can write this as two thirds times three to the first. And that's how I get each of my terms. So there's my explicit equation for sequence one. Okay. Sequence two is starts with 24 and goes to 12. So we're going to go 24, 12, and then again, I'm going to look for my common ratio. So my common ratio is 12 divided by 24. Let me draw that again. 12 divided by 24, which is equal to 1 half. So that's my common ratio. So that means I'm multiplying by 1 half every time. So it's times 1 half. So 12 times 1 half would be 6. And then times 1 half again would be 3. Times 1 half again. I'm multiplying by one half. So three times one half is three halves. And then times one half again makes this um, three fourths. So there's my next four terms. And this equation, my common ratio, which is the R, is one half. So I know it's a one half to the X. Just got to figure out my zero term, which means go backwards one from the first term. Instead of multiplying by one half, I'm going to I'm going to multiply by two, the inverse, right? It's really, you multiply one half is the same thing. We can look at this. This is the same thing as dividing by two. So the opposite of that is multiplying by two. Or dividing by a half is multiplying by two. So I would go backwards and call that 48, right? Or you can look at it and go, oh, well, it had to be in a 48 divided by two or divided by two or times one half to become a 24, right? All right, last one. If I have, what did I start with here? Uh, I started with uh, 1 and 5. So it's 1 comma 5 comma what? Well, my common ratio is 5 over 1, which is just 5. So I'm, gonna, I'm multiplying by 5 every time. So 5 times 5 is 25, right? 